Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today I'm prepping part of a TC engine. Now I just want to go over with you and show you what I do on the whole engine, even though I'm just doing a couple of parts. Here we have the connecting rod. Here's a real handy trick on the, on the TC engine, and that is to replace the, the 5 16 bolt, which goes up into the gudgeon pin, with an Allen, uh, an Allen screw. This, this then you can tighten from inside the piston. Those of you who've, d who've done this know what, what I'm talking about. Anyway, this is an 8 by one metric thread. Remember that all the threads in the T-type engine are metric. Uh, save the couple of uh, BSP, British Standard Pipe sizes. So anyway, what, what I'm doing here, I'm taking the uh, taking the nuts off, and what I'm going to do with the nuts, I've uh, I've got a nice set of nice sharp new taps here. This is an eight by one metric tap. So we'll get this guy going on here. Just clean up, clean up the threads. There's uh, two bolts here, so we'll clean up the bolts on both. Now when, when we do this, when, when we clean it up, it doesn't leave a smooth surface on the bottom. The, uh, the threads rise right at the, right at the point of, of entry. So the best thing that we can do is surface these just a little bit. I've got a piece of, oh this must be about 320 or maybe it's 180 paper, but the point is we, we just we smooth, the, smooth the bottom of the nut down. You keep turning it so that it, uh, each time you pull it towards you or push it away, it, it uh, cleans up a, another section. But eventually, eventually the, the bottom's clean, and and the point is that the uh, the thread won't hang out on the underside and foul the correct position of the of the nut. So here's here's one. But the the, the point is here. You can sand these away. And right around the middle, you can see there's a nice shiny section out on the edges. It's, uh, it's not quite so shiny out here, but right, there's a ring right around the middle. It's nice and clean, and that's what I'm after. So now it's uh, time to get the bolts off. And of course, I haven't provided myself with enough tools. I always have to have a nice, well-balanced hammer. And do what we can here. Get these bolts out. Oh gosh. Now you know they tell you you should never grab the connecting rod in a vise, but this vise has got copper jaws, and uh, as a result, uh, you can uh, you can grab it. Now these bolts are not going to. I was going to clean up the threads on these bolts. But I'm not going to now because they're stretched. We'll put these down on the tabletop, and maybe, maybe you can zoom in here and see. Especially on on the rear one here, that the the diameter gets a lot thinner right in here. You can see, and see, and that means that the threads are stretched. They're also stretched here on this bolt. So there's no way that I can reuse these bolts. I was going to, but someone's already been in here before me and over torqued them and stretched them. So I'm just going to put them back together. These connecting rods now are going to go out to the machine shop once I get a set of bolts uh, to, to the machine shop and get recircled. And what that means is they put this on a on a sanding block, not, not uh, unlike this, and take off just a couple of thousandths of an inch put this back on and and uh, torque up the bolts and then put this in a, in a boring machine so that the distance from here to the center of here 
is correct. I can't tell you what it is, it's in my tech book. And that this hole is spun out concentric to this hole, so or, uh, rather in alignment, parallel to, to this hole. And these are all functions uh, that are necessary when you're rebuilding an engine. That's called recircling the rod. Another thing that we found is essential, ab absolutely, is to have the top of this magnafluxed. This does crack up here if it's been over tightened or if the gudgeon pin is uh, the wrong size, this will crack. And if this cracks and breaks off during engine operation, uh, well, anyway, that's the end of the engine. It's a horrible mistake. So here are my four rods down, down here in a pile. Um, I was able to salvage most of the, most of the bolts. I was hunting for some, some other bolts that were, uh, that weren't shot, but that's the way it is. So anyway, now we're, so anyway, I'm going to order up bolts, put them into the connecting rods, and then send them out to the machine shop and get them recircled. Now we get the cylinder head. Now before this goes out to the machine shop, there's a bunch of stuff that I want to do to it. Um, first of all, I want to chamfer all the holes. You know, the, the hole comes in the block like this, so if you take a look at it from the side, you've got the hole down in, in here. But as you tighten the bolt down into here, as the bolt's going down, this is coming up. And if you chamfer the edge, then you don't end up with any problems with, with a misfit of the bolt. So here's our chamfering tool. And of course, this is right at the, at the point where the head on my drill breaks. So we're going to take a break and fix my drill. Well, the drill wasn't fixable, so I got another drill, but the battery drops out, out of this one pretty easily. So we're going to go ahead and chamfer these holes. And you can see that there's been a nice, a nice V put, put into there in each point. Now, I'm going to take my uh, 8 by one metric tap, put a touch of oil down inside each of these holes so my tap lasts just a little bit longer. After it leaves here, the, uh, head, uh, the head goes to the machine shop. They're going to bake it anyway. So this is tricky when you're not... Uh, there we go. And of course my my drill is not the best drill in the world. But the point is here. That we're opening up each of these and making sure that the the thread is eight by one. We've got oil in here. So that it saves our taps. I just for this for this engine. I just uh, I just bought a new a new set of taps. Well, boy, every demonstration is uh, filled with flaws. This one sure is. I can't I can't even get my drill to work. At least not correctly. So we're going to go across the entire head with a chamfering tool and chamfer every single hole that we can find. Right? Now, you could say we well, don't have to chamfer the push rod tubes, but hey, it isn't going to hurt. All the holes that the head studs come through, the 8 by one and the 10 by 1.5 uh, bolts that hold on the rocker assembly, those guys, the bolts in the front, the bolts in the back, Back here, this is a homemade plate. Obviously, uh, there was once upon a time a heater there. And off on this side, we've got some different threads. And I've talked about these being eight by one metric. The top bolts, some of those being 10 by 1.5. The spark plug holes 
are always 14 by 125. That's the standard spark plug size. But this guy up here is British Standard Pipe. 1 8 inch British Standard Pipe. Here's my set of British Standard Pipe taps in a handy little holder that my brother-in-law, uh, I think, yeah, I think that uh, was my brother-in-law, Tom Simmons, made for me. And what I should do, of course, is chamfer this first. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm not going to have any luck with my drill. No, we're not. So we're, all we can do is talk about it. Um, we'll go ahead and chamfer this guy just a little bit first. And once that's done, we'll take this, which is an eighth inch, uh, eighth uh, 28, I think, 829, what is it, uh, eighth 28th, and uh, put him in there, and then we can go ahead and get this done. Now, just because it's a pipe thread, normally you think of pipe threads being as taper threads, but pipe threads are available as parallel or taper threads. This is just a parallel thread. And it takes that banjo bolt up here. So this is part of an engine preparation. It doesn't make any difference if you're doing a, a T-type or an MGB or an MGA or a midget. If you're doing a good job, take the time to chamfer all the holes, re-thread all the holes where, where, there, where there are threads. Um, I do it pretty quickly here with a drill. Well, I'm supposed to do it quickly with a drill, but my drill broke. Um, but, you know, if, if you're, if you're uh, doing it by hand, that's a lot more careful. Uh, you always use a T-handle, because if you're using a ratchet, you can end up loading the tap, and if it breaks in the hole, oh, what a process to get out a broken tap. So, clean up all the threads, and then when you go to put the engine together, oh, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. Make sure you take an air blaster and go down, way down inside all these holes and clean out all the swarf. Make sure there are no little bits of anything in there. So that's today's demonstration. That's prepping a block, prepping an engine uh, before it goes out to the machine shop. You can't expect them to do this. I suppose if you ask them to do it, they do it. It costs a bundle because it just takes a lot of time. There are a lot of threaded holes in a block, absolutely. Well, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to our birthday party this coming weekend. Uh, the uh, 20, oh help me out, I think it's the 21st this, uh, this Friday. And after that, the British Motor Trade Conference will be in uh, Denver. After that, we think, the Chicago Land Swap Meet uh, in, uh, at the DuPage County Fairgrounds. And after that, I'll be in Minnesota uh, at the uh, uh, Mark Brandau's Quality Coaches. So if you have any questions about anything, give us a call. Uh, go on to our website, subscribe to our e-news. Uh, we've been sending that out on a regular basis. Sounds like someone else is calling. Till then, see you later.